Happy then. So if you've been able to get hold of our beautiful skin tones actions, these are uh, our actions here, and we're on version one, of course. Um, what you've got to do is go and install them. So the best way to install them is in the actions palette. Palette. So we can click click on actions. If you've already got actions open, this is the arrow. This is beautiful skin tones. So if you've got a Mac, just double click on on these on your desktop or wherever they are, and they'll automatically open. If you go to PC, click on the hamburger menu and come down to load actions. So first up, I've got an actions overview. We click play and it's just showing you what, uh, who made the actions like Doug and Murray Anderson Clements. We made them together. I'm Murray and Doug is the uh, award winning portrait photographer. So and next on I'll show you the steps to these. So just click stop and we'll continue on from there. Thanks guys. Righty. Let's get into the nitty gritty of our beautiful skin tones action. So we've first done the overview and now we've got the remove blemishes. So the blemishes on Heidi's face are the pimples, this hair that comes down through the eye, there's quite a few of them. Maybe this little scar which is pretty recent by the looks of it. Um, sometimes you don't want to get rid of scars which have been there for a long time. Um, these moles here and freckles will usually keep the small lines they're great to keep as well otherwise people start getting fake and remember just to go through and edit even all the skin tones on any bare skin that's showing so that's probably the way to go sometimes we have little marks on the lips um, extra eyelashes around here we'll get rid of if we've got a stray eyelash that comes into an eye maybe sometimes we'll get rid of that so it's up to you how much you want to get rid of but remember you do want to keep it real so let's, let's click play the so click and play um, runs through the action and gives us an overview of what to do I'll just stop that so here we've actually got where we're going to remove the blemishes from and this other layer is I double click on it it's a black and white layer and what it does is enhances all the blemishes on the face, on the skin anyway. So usually we come full left on the reds and full right on the blues and sometimes just play with the yellow just to make it a bit lighter so we can see the blemishes. Yeah. All right, my first tool I usually pick after clicking on my layer is remove blemishes. So here we've got the healing brush tool and what I'll do is I'll option click on some good skin and come over and click on some other skin so eventually like after a little bit of work we can keep clicking clicking and if we want to change angles of where we're choosing from we can just option click and click again so it's important that we have always have the right settings so for my brush I've got a size and we can change that quite readily and the hardness hardness 25% to zero is usually good if you make it really hard, it's going to be quite obvious. The important things to uh, also tick is aligned. So the cursor is always aligned with the brush. Or the sample points are aligned with the brush. And we'll sample from the current and below layers. So if I, you just watch me and I'm just going to keep painting for the next little bit. It's going to take a bit. Okay, so the next part is we want to get rid of this hair. The good thing to do is we can option click and let's click on here. Now if I hold down shift and move the cursor up here and then click again, it actually does a straight line between every click. So I can come through and quickly delete this hair without too much trouble. You do have to be careful where you sample from. So as I'm getting down here, I'll sample from the other side, click, hold down shift and click again and click again. Option click, let's click and drag to get some, some of the hairs out of the road, of course. So all of this takes time, so, and the reason we, why we've done this on the remove blemishes layer is it's non-destructive. So if I turn this on and off again, it's going to show you what I've removed and I can always go in and erase this.
Now if I zoom out and have a good look at Heidi, we can see before and after and how we remove quite a few of the uh, blemishes off her face. Remember we, we still want to keep her realistic, so turning off the layer mask, so there's Heidi before and after and she looks a lot cleaner. So 15 minutes time and we're all done. Next action, uh, skin tone and colour actually removes the black and white layer and merges all the layers just so we don't have problems down the track. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. So as you can see, um, we've created three layers. There's the color layer down below that's actually applied a blur, our editing layer and the details layer. And the first thing we do is we've got to go and select the eyedropper tool so we can select our skin tones and skin colors and then we can start painting them in. Right. So we select our eyedropper tool. We can go for a sample size of let's say 31 or 11 by 11 average is up to you. So today I'm going 11 by 11 average and they're in pixels and I'm sampling from current and below. So let's grab our brush tool. Uh, the brush size doesn't matter. We can change that during while we're doing it but make sure we've got a hardness of zero. So it's nice, nice soft etches. Actually, I'm going to go 20 today, so let's do that. Uh, the opacity, 30 and 30 is usually a good number to start at. Remember, we don't have to be exact. But... Okay, before we start painting, make sure we've got the tone and color, and this is actually sometimes better done zoomed in. So let's zoom in. So Command Plus, zoom into 100, 200%, and let's start below the eyes. So by holding down the option key, I'm actually selecting the eyedropper tool and I'm looking for smooth, like good skin tones where I want to paint. So I want to paint these skin tones here and colors into this area. And we're just looking for smooth transitions. So option click. And now if I start painting in, it's painting at 30%, flow and 30% opacity. And just remember, we're going in the way of the uh, the tones are heading. So now if I'm painting down the nose, I'm just going to smooth here. So when, it's not actually to get rid of the shadows, it's actually just to make a smoother transition. So painting with the flow of the skin tones. Sometimes if the highlights are a bit bright, we can take them out a little bit as well. But highlights are actually a good thing. So select from there. And as you can see, I'm actually constantly selecting and painting in the skin tones. So this can actually take a while. And what we want to do is just bit by bit, paint in and we can see what happens. So if I turn this off, and as you can see, the skin's actually a lot, the transitions are smoother. And so further ado, give me a bit of time and we'll slowly paint out all these. So a great trick when you're editing is always to zoom out. But another tool instead of zooming out is you can go to view, uh, correction, let's go to window and let's go new window. So when we create a new window, we're actually creating two windows of the same picture. So we're not duplicating them. And we go up two up vertical. So we've got Heidi here and we can zoom in on her a bit just so she's in screen. And this, this helps us see if we're stuffing up. Whereas on this image, we can zoom right in. Let's squash Heidi in a little bit over there. Close the actions, and then we can see where we can edit. So I'm just gonna keep brushing, selecting. We need these shadows underneath the eyes. As you can see, there's a big red thing coming through her face just over here. And we'll probably smooth that about it, smooth that transition out a bit. Right, it's down from the nose, and just come in. Just make these things smoother. And you can actually see the edits, edits happening slowly. Oops, I think we've done a few wrong ones. Let's undo these. 
see them sort of happening slowly on the screen. So what we want to do is actually go with the transition of colour. So we don't want to paint from light to dark, we should be actually painting along the same colour to make it quite nice. Let's do a little bit more on the forehead, just to get rid of that shine and make it a bit smoother transition. So as you can see with young Heidi, if we do it before and after she's looking like really good and her skin transition is quite much much smoother. So for the time being we could work on that for a lot longer, make our brushes bigger and smaller, um, work on the individual areas and make them look really really nice but I think 20 minutes is enough so further ado let's move on to the next part of the actions let's start shaping the face so the next action is called highlights and shadows in other words this is dodge and burn so we're going to dodge and burn parts of the face so if we want to bring the image forward we dodge that part of the image like the nose and under the eyes and um, a little bit on the forehead the cupids around the top of the lip, the chin, some of the cheeks, yeah, uh, the neck, the collarbones especially, kind of top of the boobs. So we actually can see where the light is. Now if we want to burn, we're going to burn certain parts of the image. So we can burn lightly down the cheeks, lift the eyes, we do a bit of a burn on both sides. I usually burn around the hairline and the whole face under the chin. The chin is very helpful to actually distinguish from the face to the neck is actually a bit more 3D. Sometimes we burn a little bit of the ears, yeah? So really what we're doing is making more depth in the image. And this is a pretty cool action, so I'm going to go ahead and play it. It'll actually delete or merge these layers. And just so we don't stuff up anything, and let's play. All right. As you can see, it's created two layers of highlights and shadows. Um, at the moment, if I turn them on and off, there should be no change in the image because they're just new layers and there's nothing in them. Both of these layers are blended on soft light. So what we're going to do, do now is go ahead and paint in white. So I'm going to choose the brush tool. Um, let's just start with opacity of 30 and a flow of 30. I think we can probably go a bit lower later. Um, and choose a white brush, we've got the highlights and I'll just zoom this out a bit and start brushing. So, so as you can see we're brushing underneath the eyes, along the nose, a little bit on the forehead, oops that's too much, let's change the uh, opacity down, let's go 10% make the brush bigger a nice broad stroke so on the chin on the neck we want that to come in the collarbones are quite important just on top of the bones there you can make the brush bigger do a little bit on the boobs just so it shapes them Come across the blacks, we're going to swap the, uh, the foreground and background colour and we're going to start paint, painting with black. So opacity, let's change that down a bit. Flow, because we just don't want to hit it too much. Right, so a little bit on the cheeks. Oh, we do have two screens open but I don't think we need it at this point in time so we'll just close that one. Let's come around the hairline. Now that we've done our highlights and shadows, it's actually a pretty nifty effect and gives us a bit more uh, depth and shape to the model's face. So what I'm going to do now is play our iris and pupils action. So 
first thing we've got to do is actually merge down these layers. So I'll right click on the layers and flatten the image. And now let's play RS and pupils. All right, so all we need to do is paint with the brush tool. What we've created is a 50% gray layer, which is RGB 128128128, and that's middle gray. We've inverted the mask, so actually absolutely nothing is selected. And now I'm going to go in and brush the eyes. So let me zoom in just a little. We'll just work on one eye at the moment. Let's grab the brush tool over here on the left. Make the opacity to 100 and flow to 100%. Make the brush a little bit smaller by using the bracket key, the left bracket key, and let's just paint in the eye. Of course, over here we're painting on the mask. And just be a little bit careful, don't go too much into the whites because it's going to make the whites too white. So I'll just undo that. Alright, so we can actually make the opacity of these eyes of this layer a lot brighter. So it's on 33%, but if we move it up to 65, it's going to be a lot better. So let's change our brush setting down a bit. Let's just go 30% 30, 30 flow, and then, oops, that's even too much. Let's go a little, little bit less. And just paint in the whites. And let's change the foreground and background color, and let's just make sure we brush in a little bit of shadow. So the effect is, we just don't want to overdo it, we can paint randomly. And I'll show you the effect by holding down the option key, clicking on the mask, and that's exactly what it looks like. So shadow is always good, so you need to leave that in. I'll come across the other eye, select the mask again, and with the brush tool change it to opacity of 100 and just keep painting. Of course in white. There we go. And as you can see, the eyes really, really pop. Again, change the flow for background, and we'll paint that in a little, little bit on the whites because it's actually a bit strong sometimes. Um, let's put a bit of shadow in, and we're just going to change that flow to ten. So shadow across the top. Alright, so when I zoom out, the eyes actually have a quite a bit of punch, punch to them now. All you have to do is change the opacity, do you want them brighter or darker? Remember, realistic is the key, so don't go too much, I'm just going to go about 40% at the moment. A couple of little extras into our actions at the moment. So we've got skin luminosity and enhanced colour. So skin luminosity will enhance the skin, so we'll have to go through and select the skin and enhance color enhances everything. So you've got to be really careful with that action. So I'll play this action and we'll see our results. All right, so we actually have created a, um, a channel mixel channel. I've added the greens, added more green. So you've got to be careful with these sliders because they've always got to equal 100 and I've added monochrome, so which means black and white. So if this dialog box automatically opens up color range. You're best off selecting the skin tones. Sometimes skin tones won't work. Sometimes you have to use sample or your highlights, shadows, and midtones. Um, and this great little uh, checkbox is the text face. So what I'm actually looking for is like smoother tones, like as we got now, detect faces. Sometimes it works with and sometimes it works out um, of the image. And as you can see, I've selected grayscale for our selection preview, just so I can see a larger preview of our selection. So it's always better. All right, so remember, white reveals, black conceals. So we're applying this mask to our channel mixer and it's going to add a lot more green in this this layer which you'll see if I click OK it does a nifty little thing of adding more depth to the image awesome huh? OK, enhance colour 
If I play this action, it opens up a new layer. You love this color, color pop. Beware, it doesn't always work well on skins like I said before. So let's stop that. What I'm gonna do is hold down the Option key and drag this mask up to the next mask and it's going to copy it across. It's very, very strong. So be careful of this one. So at the moment, I don't think I'll actually use this color pop on this layer because or this picture, because I don't think we, we actually need much more color in this image, so I'm going to delete it. We have our portrait sharpening action. So I normally would just save this file, air, file is just by going to File, Save, and save it as a TIFF file. Um, so whenever I'm going to output, if I'm going to output it to web, I'd resize it, or if I'm going to put it to print, I'd resize it and then add the sharpening. So let's play this action. It'll go through and do its thing. Flatten the image, of course. Uh, create a couple of good, cool layers and apply some good unsharpening to them. So first of all, we've uh, sharpened the highlights. So if I zoom into 100% so we can see the effects better. So turn the highlights on and off. And as you can see, it's pretty nicely sharpened the pores like the whites of the eyes, some of the skin, but not too much. And my opacity is at 100%. Whereas sharpening the shadows, my opacity is 50%. So we have these numbers here if we're shooting a portrait. So turn that on and off. And of course, you can see in the eyelashes and the eyebrows that it's a lot nicer. So let's turn the whole thing on and off. So hopefully this really helps you with your portrait sharpening. As I said before, if you're doing a landscape, make sure the shadows are sharpened at 50% and the highlights are sharpened. Actually, it's the other way around. Shadows at 100% and the highlights at 50%. Thanks for watching my video and I hope you've got a lot out of these beautiful skin tones, actions, and good luck with your future endeavors. I love you all.